Hi everyone, my name is Martin and this video is about a 30 day sugar fast. So this 30 day sugar fast includes no added or refined sugar. I was still permitting myself stuff uh, like fruits, you know, natural liquor and sugars. Before I tell you kind of like the day to day, um, I want to share with you the inspiration behind this. I was doing quite good, um, you know, avoiding sugar here and there, but how many times a day do you walk past some like sugary snack and have to find the willpower to uh, say no? And then one day I had a huge binge, which isn't too different, but um, this one was so spectacular that, you know, the next day I felt lethargic and full and energetic. But what really got to me was the fact that I was a slave to my sugar craving, to my sweet craving. I couldn't say no. So I thought, uh, I'll quit it for 30 days. It's easy for me to say, to do something for 30 days or to, to quit it for 30 days because I'm not telling myself, you know, quit this thing forever, just for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I've kind of written down, I've journaled about it and I'm gonna share with you those like diary entries. Here we go. Nice not to be tempted by sugary snacks. Uh, I had to say no to coffee because they always put sugar in it. I ended up buying something which I didn't think had sugar in, but it did. I can no longer have my favorite sugary drinks at lunch. I got drunk and ate lots of junk food. Now that I've experienced overindulgence, I can reflect on that in times of desire and know that it's not worth it. Because I couldn't have instant coffee, I actually found a fruit juice vendor instead. Had a really busy day at work today. Straight after that, I went for a workout. I didn't have any time for sugar, but I didn't think there was any need for it either. Which is funny because uh, quite often I sometimes justify to myself, you know, I need a little bit of sugar to keep me focused, to keep me going. I had a zero sugar canned energy drink. Uh, with sucralose instead. Sucralose is just another name for sugar. Technically, it's a sweetener, but I find that I'm still being, you know, a slave to the sweet tooth. So I'm going to avoid that as well. Uh, while I'm at it, here's a list of other um, names for sugar, which don't have the word sugar in. Even salted peanuts have added sugar. Uh, that's 10 grams in 100 grams, which is 10%. Does ice cream have sugar? Whoops. <laughs> I found that fruit is a good alternative to satisfying the sweet tooth itch. Uh, this challenge stops me from eating sweets, which is useful because they're just so abundant in the office. I nearly slipped, but I remember that the end goal was more important than the fleeting pleasure junk food brings. In Singapore, they put um, sugar even in savory foods like fish. You can really taste it now as opposed to before, and I'm gonna avoid those as well. Another thing that I noticed on this day is that I'm feeling less hungry in the day overall. Uh, I don't need a meal instantly after a workout, which is unlike me. Today was really hard, and after dinner, um, I usually like eat something sweet. Uh, so I just ate loads of nuts instead, but I didn't really think that was the solution. I shouldn't eat junk food even if it doesn't have sugar because uh, there's nothing like nutritious in it. This fast needs to be exclusive, uh, not even permitting myself the tiniest bit of sugar because it's just so easy to justify to have one more little snack or a little bit more. And I saw my super lean friend Gian, oh! who inspired me to take this seriously uh, and I'm wondering whether I can quit it once and for all. I saw a cool video which compares alcohol to sugar. It's quite interesting because it shows you that the body is not really equipped to handle sugar uh, efficiently. I'm gonna link that video in the comments below. I feel that this fast has given me more mental clarity. There was one day when I woke up and I don't know, things felt different. Like I just felt clear headed and um, like all the background chatter is really turned down. It's getting easier and it's inspiring that I've done so many days in a row. I can say no to sugar with ease, it doesn't even cross my mind anymore. Uh, I feel comfortable with people eating sugar around me and I enjoy the challenge. I was gifted a wife biscuit, but I didn't know it had sugar. I'm wondering whether this is the reason that I was hungrier than usual after dinner. I was able to not be overcome by hunger all day. Even up to nine, uh, I was still not starving, which uh, if I haven't had dinner, I'm definitely starving by then. But yeah. I refused some sugary snacks um, and then I wasn't feeling, I didn't feel like I was missing out. Here's where I went bad, uh, Christmas. So my mom sent me a whole box of McVitie's 
and it took me to eat the whole box to realize that it didn't taste as good as just normal oranges. Not long after that, you know, I got a tummy ache and I felt bad all next day. Lethargic and uncomfortable. Um, and so definitely not worth it. Maybe because I had chocolate yesterday, it was easier for myself to justify it to myself to have a little bit more today. Eating three times a day helps and it feels good not to be too full. A housemate of mine um, gifted me a donut and once I had that donut, it just unleashed a wave of a feeding frenzy. Long story short, I basically I paid him $10 so I can have the rest of his donuts. And I ate all of them. Um, and yeah, after that, you know, I felt crap physically, uh, but also just mentally because I couldn't resist. Um, I felt like I can, once I start, I don't, I can't stop until I, like, I'm full. Uh, and I, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have this alcohol. So we carried on doing this challenge until the 17th of February. I would have done about three months if it hadn't been for the little um, indulgences here and there. Uh, but I think that actually they made me feel more determined about this um, challenge because you know I was like come on you gotta take yourself seriously you gotta you gotta do this I'm gonna give you like the main reasons why I think trying this is worthwhile and the reason one is because you're in control of your hunger and it feels good to be in control of yourself uh, reason two is that I was satisfied with less food and even vegetables um, and also that I would stop eating when I'm full and not until I've cleaned the plate. I just felt that was a lot healthier and because maybe I, my body wasn't busy digesting food that I didn't need all day, I had more energy. And I guess the flip side of that is that if you do have more energy that you're gonna, if you eat more and thus have more energy than you're gonna spend throughout your day, how does your body really like deal with getting rid of it? Like if you exercise, okay, that's cool. Uh, but I've, you know, I've heard that that energy could also go into the brain and you start overthinking things, which isn't good. Yeah, less hungry throughout the day is another benefit. And that moment of mental clarity. Yeah, I guess if you're a real productivity buff, like you should you should definitely give this a go because um, you, you might experience something you've never experienced before. It kind of makes you wonder that if our whole lives we've, we've been um, living with added sugar, we don't have anything to compare it to like what are we really like without it and what are we sacrificing for treating ourselves in that way i know it sounds like i'm making a big deal out of a little bit of sugar but if we are what we eat and what we put into ourselves then how does how does those you know spikes of uh energy which sugar kind of shocks our body with actually like affect us and you know there are bad points about doing this uh, challenge for sure you're gonna have to exercise self-control all the time especially at the start the worst thing is that the world is against you and this is probably why <laughs> having that self-control is so hard because we're literally um, bombarded with like vending machines and posters and advertising uh, our shop at uni has like the one aisle for fruits and vegetables and like six aisles for junk food like even healthy junk food but it's still like it's crap if that hasn't put you off and you want to give this a go here are the main uh reflection points which i've as i'm summarizing throughout my experience write these down print them out and then when if you do give this challenge a go you can read these and it'll kind of hopefully anchor you back to completing the challenge nothing good comes from the sugar eventually not taste uh, not not being full um, it decreases your focus and willpower uh, and there's no nutrition sugar added sugar is addictive um, be aware that the pleasure you're going to experience from eating something is sugary is fleeting and unsatisfactory hunger in general is temporary i did a video on this that's going to be linked below Remember that the satisfaction from you reaching your long-term goals is, is um, much greater and much more important than having something sugary here or then. Don't stay up too late and get a good night's sleep because when the body doesn't have um, enough energy, if you haven't slept well it's, or you're at the end of a long day, you're going to start craving sugar um, 
And not only that, that's gonna ruin your like sleep as well because now you've got this extra energy which you're not gonna use. Have an ideal body shape uh, in mind of a person uh, and find that photo and put it somewhere visible for you so you can know what you're straight, uh, striving for. Mm, for me, this is uh, Jeff Cavalier from Athlean X. Realize that by doing this, uh, you're gonna empower others to do the same. Finally, find other healthier ways to reward yourself after you've done a good day. For me, video games, that works. To conclude this video, if it's the right time for you, definitely give this challenge a go. You're gonna learn something about yourself. Uh, and if not, you're gonna learn what you might be sacrificing in exchange for sugary snacks. With that being said, I think quitting sugar forever is impossible. Mm, you would have to be extremely careful where you eat uh, when you're eating out and like um, read the back of everything you buy, which to be honest, like you get better at it. Then there's like celebrations, uh, birthdays, Christmases, uh, turning down everything something gives you and having to explain yourself over and over and over again. That'll be sad, <laughs> no doubt about it. Perhaps something that is more useful and achievable is having added sugar as the exception and not the rule to our day-to-day -day eating habit. But how you do this needs to be in line with your lifestyle and your preferences. Um, for me, something like saying no to most sugary snacks works, uh, but then just being honest and having a little bit now and then, that's, that works. I'm ending this video of an analogy from Fed Up, a documentary on sugar and the obesity problem in America, which uh, you can find on free on YouTube and I'm going to link it below in the comments. The narrator compares uh, being a heroin addict and having heroin um, advertised everywhere throughout your day today, like on posters and stuff. You know, it would be impossible to stop. And that's kind of how it is for some people who have a problem with sugar. I know it's kind of somber, but we should be aware that um, our reptilian minds, you know, are being tempted everywhere and um, we have to find a way to deal with it in our own way, of course. That's the end of this video. You know, thanks for spending your time to watch it. Uh, massive shout out to Francesca and Gian for the pictures. And um, I hope my idea of a 30 day sugar fast has inspired you to find your own way. If you found this video useful, maybe you should consider subscribing. Thanks for now. Thanks for now. <laughs>